Good morning, Nakusa High School. Today is October 28th. In my segment, I took the time to look at the new grade check policy. As some of you may know, it went from every two weeks to every quarter. Now I interviewed Miss Baldwin. Here's what she had to say about the new grade check policy. Well, last year we checked every two weeks or so um, to just verify if students were struggling with certain classes um, and we would meet with as many students as we could um, to try to get them back on the right path. And so this year, um, we're still running grade checks, but we're not meeting with students as much um, and really kind of working more with teachers and, and letting families know and, and advisors are working a little bit more with students more directly. What made us switch up the policies? Well, it's hard to go into detail without potentially breaking some confidentiality, um, but when you have a program um, set up to help students succeed, it doesn't always make the most sense to create a, an immediate, pretty significant consequence. Um, and so we really looked at, was our previous program and um, things that we had set in place, was that being successful? Um, and we found that it really wasn't being successful. We weren't really getting the results we wanted. So we're taking this year to really kind of look at what do we want and what's the best way to get there. Does that make sense? Okay. And then if people fail a quarter, because that's correct, it's quarter by quarter. Yeah. Well, yep. Uh, how can they say they're in sports, come back from failing? So what what we have in place right now is to um, for students who are struggling for any reason whether they're home on quarantine or not um, is to really use that two week um, incomplete and then after that two week teachers can still extend an incomplete into three or four weeks if it's appropriate it just kind of depends because some students need time to do their best possible work. We don't want them rushing through and not really learning the content, just jumping through through hoops. We want them to do their best work so that in next classes and when they go off to college that they've really learned the skills and the content that they need to be successful. So using that two week window, which is common, most schools have that two week incomplete that, you know, for medical reasons, for um, a variety of reasons, actually, um, schools use incompletes. So we're, that's our first step. Thank you, Mrs. Baldwin, for your time. Now, if you guys have questions about the new grade check policy, please ask Ms. Baldwin or Mr. Johnston about details for it. And if you're an athlete, please ask Mr. Hahn about it. Now on to Logan with his segment about girls basketball. Thank you, Hunter. With the upcoming girls basketball season approaching us, I took the time to interview a couple of our seniors about open gyms as well as the season. Here's what they had to say. As seniors, what are you guys looking forward to this season? Um, I'm looking forward to having fun, building the program, and just, you know, living life um, on the basketball court. Um, I'm looking forward to finishing off our last season with my best friend. And what does a typical open gym look like? Um, open gyms are every Sunday, 4 to 5 30. Um, and they, have, <laughs> they are student ran, or like uh, by the seniors. We like pick out which drills we want to do, and then we like do a little shoot around and play some games. And how are numbers looking for you guys this year? Um, they're better than last year, but we could definitely use some girls. So if you are interested in joining, Please come to one of the open gyms and we'll get you signed up. <laughs> Thank you guys for your time. If any of you girls would be interested in joining or attending open gyms, please contact Mr. Colo for that information. And good luck to you girls this season. Now on to Mr. Cordero with his segment. Thank you, Mr. Petch. As the new sports complex has added a great asset to our community, it has also created some adverse effects on our disc golf course. I've met with Mrs. Strelo, who was a part of the Disc Golf Course Committee, and asked some questions about the upcoming additions, and this is what she had to say. How did the Disc Golf Course come about? Uh, we actually got the Disc Golf Course back in, I think it was 2005. Uh, we were awarded a PEP grant, which is a large sum of money that we were awarded as a PE 
for the district. And with that, we were able to put in the disc, go, disc golf course. And um, that's also how like we got our rock walls and different things like that. So we've had our course since around 2005, 2006. How long have you been a part of helping the disc golf course out? So I, I was a part of the original group that helped put the disc golf course in when, way back when um, it went in originally. And then this summer, Mr. Spring uh, contacted me about making modifications to our disc golf course because of the um, renovations and the improvements we did to the athletic fields and having the opportunity at that point to go ahead and make changes to our course. What are some things we should look forward to seeing with these add-ons to the course? Um, so with the new course, we are going to go ahead and add in two additional holes. Um, so they will be actually along the um, practice fields of the, by the football field there. And so they're going to be shorter holes. Um, so our course numbers will change. So it'll still start at the middle school, but then again with the add-ons along that practice field, we will have holes three and four. And then it will continue on um, starting with hole five by the Lynn Creek Estate sign following around the nature trail and then continuing onward. Why did you guys decide to create these new holes? Um, one of the big reasons we decided to create the new holes was the fact that there are so many varying ages and abilities that use our disc golf course that we thought having a couple more in there would be a great opportunity, especially the shorter holes for some of the younger students um, who go ahead and maybe can't just throw as far. And then also to add in more challenge for those skilled ones to go ahead and um, see if they're able to make a hole in one or those types of challenges. So, and to just change it up and keep it fresh for the kids in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Stralo. We're looking forward to seeing the new additions and the new holes added to the course. If any students are interested in helping out, please contact Mrs. Stralo. And thank you all for watching. Have a tremendous weekend. And now, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Happy Thursday, everyone. For birthdays this weekend, on Sunday, happy birthday goes out to Jasmine Johnson. No athletics today or this weekend, and today, during lunch, the club FBLA meets. Now today is Student Council's Halloween Contest Competition. I hope everyone is in their best outfit, and I hope the best costume wins. Now everyone have a safe Halloween, make good choices, we'll see you next week. Peace.